Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is section 5.1, uh, which is more induction. And uh, yeah, really, I'm really sad about this because uh, I just filmed for like a half an hour and then found out that the recording was not existent. Um, it started and stopped immediately. Very sad. I'm sharing my pain with you. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So uh, here's what we're going to do. Um, I don't want to go on to section 5.2 yet because um, I don't think that we have a good understanding of section 5.1. And so what I'm going to do in this lecture is just go over sample problems um, from the homework set. And, you know, hopefully that will be useful for you. Um, I don't know. I mean, I might end up doing some that end up on your homework and you can just copy the answers from this. That's that's fine. OK, um, that said, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So these are just sample problems from section 5.1. Okay, so we're going to do um, 5.1.3 first. So um, the way these are organized is that they have parts A through F and it walks you through the entire proof. All right, so um, 5.1.3 says let uh, P of N uh, be the statement one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus dot 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 up to n squared is equal to n n plus one two n plus one uh, over six for all n equals one two three dot 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 okay and that's what we're supposed to prove Okay, now that's a pretty complicated formula over on the right. And you'll see when we go to prove it that it is actually kind of, you know, significant algebra here. Um, so maybe you want to use Wolfram Alpha to help you help you do some of this. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this is what we have to show. And we're going to do it with an induction proof. And the homework forces you to do that by walking you through the whole process. So the first thing it asks you to do is part A. And it says, what is the statement p of 1. What is the statement p of 1? Okay, now what they want you to do here is basically this. Um, this is for p in is 1 up to n squared. Um, if you put a 1 in there, what would this whole thing say? It's as simple as that. Um, so think about this. If you put a one right there for the n, then you would be stopping at one squared, right? So you're starting at one squared and you're counting up to n, but n is one. So you're counting from one to one. So what would the left-hand side look like if you put a one in it? It would just be one squared, okay? Now on the right-hand side, You've got an in here, an in here, an in here, and we need to put a one in for all of those ends. So you would have one, one plus one, two times one plus one over six. All right, and that's what the statement P of one would be. Now I'm not gonna simplify it here because I'm gonna move on to part B. Part B says, uh, show that P of one is true. And showing that P of 1 is true is basically what we call uh, the basis step in the previous lecture. That's what that is, basis step. Okay, so show that P of 1 is true. So what I do when I'm trying to show that P of 1 is true here is, I'm going to duplicate this first of all, right down here, is um, because I don't know if it's true yet, I mean of course it is, but I don't know if it is. I always put a question mark over the equal sign if I'm asking if it's true, not claiming that it's true. So I do that, and then all you have to do to show that this is true is work out the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So of course, the left-hand side is one squared, so that's just one. The right-hand side is one, and then one plus one, so that's a two, and then you've got, uh, 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3. So this is what you have. And of course, 
you work out that right hand side and it is just one right because it's six on top six on bottom so it is one and as soon as you know it's true you're done with that step we showed that p of one is true because it says one equals one all right that's it move on to part c so part c says what is the induction hypothesis they say inductive hypothesis that's not how i learned it so that's not how i say it they say what is the induction or inductive hypothesis now another difference between how i do it and how the book does it is they like to use in i don't use in for the variable because in was the variable that they gave us in the original problem statement i want to use a different variable just to be clear that you know when i'm using k a different variable that's my work not the original problem statement it helps keep things uh separate so the inductive hypothesis is always assume p of k is true right but you have to write out in symbols what that means for this problem so for this problem you would assume p of k is true but what's p of k so up here this is p of n so p of k is just the same thing but with all of the n's replaced with k's so if you replace all the n's with k's what that's going to look like is this one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus dot 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 up to k squared is equal to k k plus one two k plus one over six okay so that's the induction hypothesis there's no work there we're just claim oh, we're not claiming anything we're assuming that it's true so for the rest of the problem you pretend that that is a fact all right, now we're on to part D. Part D is um, what do we need to prove for the induction step? So what do we need to prove for the induction step or inductive step, however you want to say it? Okay, and uh, just like the previous part, Right, where the induction hypothesis is always assume p of k is true what we need to do is show p of k plus one is true so we need to show p of k plus one is true but what does that mean for this problem so we need to show p of k plus one so p of k plus one we're doing the same thing that we did uh, for p of k we just need to write out this but instead of going up to k, we need to go one further. So like one past k would be k plus one. So essentially what you need to do is go back to the beginning and all of the ends should be replaced with k plus one. So k plus one, k plus one, k plus one, stop at k plus one, right? And that's what we need to show. So we need to show one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus, you keep going, um, you don't need to show that k that I just wrote, but I did. You need to stop at k plus 1, because that's where you're, we're stopping for k plus 1. Um, oops, not what I wanted. Just, I changed the size of the eraser and forgot that I changed it. Okay. All right, so that's the left-hand side. And then for the right-hand side, you need to replace all the k's with k plus 1 here. So the first k here is going to be a k plus 1. And then you've got a k plus 1. If you replace this k with k plus 1, it's going to be uh, k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2. Uh, let me just change my window size here. Sorry about that. Um, And then if you change the last k to a k plus 1, it's going to be 2 k plus 1 plus 1. So like 2 k plus 1 plus 1. 
And I'm just going to make a note of something here to save myself some time later. I don't want to rewrite this whole thing, but if you work that out, you have uh, 2 times k is 2k, and then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So if you work this out, that term is actually 2k plus 3. And you don't need that for anything yet, but we will in the next step. Okay, so that's what we're supposed to show. So we haven't shown it. We're supposed to get there. So then what we need to do is part E, which is complete the inductive step. So what you're going to do here is you're basically going to start with the induction hypothesis and then do math until you show the thing that you're supposed to show. So start with the induction hypothesis, which is part C, uh, and get to um, the conclusion, which is what we have in part D. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So this is where all of the work for the proof is. Everything else we did is actually not the work that we need. It's, uh, you know, the, the stuff telling you what you're going to be doing for an induction proof. Uh, all right. So again, we're going to start with the induction hypothesis, which was 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus dot 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 up to, well, writing hard up to k squared is equal to k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1 over 6. All right, that's the induction hypothesis. Now we can start with that and use it as a fact because we're assuming that it's true, right? The way induction works is you need to show p of k implies p of k plus 1. So you just assume this and then you show this, all right? Um, so we start with the P of K. So there it is. Now what we need to do is somehow turn this into the line that we have on part D with valid math, right? That's where, that's the hard part. I have to do valid math. So the way you would do this is you say, okay, well, this is what we have, up one up to K. And what we need to get to is one up to K plus one. So Clearly, what you have here is missing this k plus 1 term, right? We don't have a k plus 1 squared right here, but we can add one. How do you do it? Well, we're doing algebra here. So you, if you want one, you can just add one. But if you add k plus 1 squared to the left-hand side, you would also have to add k plus 1 squared on the right-hand side. So that's what we do. So then the left-hand side becomes 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus dot 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 up to k squared plus k plus 1 squared. So up to k plus 1 squared now. And on the right, you have k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1 over 6 plus k plus 1 squared. All right. Now, we're already done with the left-hand half now because this right here is actually what you had in part D, and that's where you're supposed to get to. So the, the entire left-hand side is done now. What's not done is the right-hand side. This is what we have, and this is what we need. So somehow we have to do algebra, and this hopefully will turn out to be equal to what we have on the right in part D. So we just need to do some algebra to simplify this. So you're going to simplify. And um, what should our first step be? The first step should be this, because this is a single fraction up here, right? And this is two different terms. So we need to get from two terms down to one term. So I think what we need to do is add these two fractions together. Well, this isn't a fraction, but we still need to add it. So if you want to add something to a fraction, you need a common denominator. So common denominator plus add. That's what we're going to do there. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next page here. Equals. So k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, 
over 6. And then for the k plus 1 squared on the right, we're going to add 6 over 6, right? That's how we're going to get a common denominator. Now, what about the left-hand side? Well, for the rest of the problem, we're just going to be dragging this left-hand side with us. It's just an anchor. You have to keep dragging it. Okay, um, so this is where we are now. Now, then what we can do is we can actually add these fractions. Add. Let's do that. So we can combine them into one fraction here. We're going to have k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, plus 6, k plus 1 squared. What do we have on the left? The same thing, duplicate it again. All right, so, so far so good, right? We have one fraction now. Then what you have to do is you have to simplify this numerator. And simplifying the numerator is pretty tedious, but it's, it is like factoring and multiplying out polynomials. You all have taken calculus, you can factor. If not, you know, use Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha can factor but uh, I'll do it by hand. So the way you would do this is probably like this. This is gonna be the least amount of work. Um, don't just multiply out the entire numerator. That's too much work. What you should notice is that there's a K plus one here and also here, because then you can factor out a K plus one out of both of these two terms. So you take out a K plus one, and then what will you be left with? Well, if you take away the k plus 1 here, you'll have the k and the 2k plus 1. And if you take away a k plus 1 here, well, there's two of them. So if you take away 1, you'll still have 1k plus 1 left and the 6. So it'll be 6k plus 1 over 6. All right, we're getting somewhere. Um, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to multiply out that stuff in the parentheses here. So you got k times 2, k, k times 2k, that's 2k squared, k times 1, that's k, 6 times k, that's 6k, and then 6 times 1, that is 6. All of that's over 6. Notice I'm ignoring the left-hand side for a while. I don't want to have to keep copying it. Then what you can do is just combine those two terms in the middle there, the k and the 6k. You get 2k squared plus 7k plus 6 over 6. Okay, so how are we doing? I think we're doing all right, um, but we've got 2k squared plus 7k plus 6, and if you look at what we're supposed to get to, we're supposed to be getting to k, k plus 2, 2k plus 3. We have a k plus 1, so that's good, but this is looks like it's factored, whereas here, this is not factored. So we just need to factor this, and hopefully it'll be what we want. You can use Wolfram Alpha, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to do it by hand, because, you know, why not? So if you wanted to factor this, um, the way you would do it is I would take the 2 times the 6 and have 12, and then the 7, 7. And then I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to 12 and add up to 7. Those numbers are 3 and 4. Once you come up with those, then you could take the 7 here, split it into a 3 and a 4. And you can write that as 2k squared plus um, 4k or 3k plus 3k plus 6, like that. Right, 4k plus 3k is 7k, so we haven't changed anything. Take those first two terms, factor out a 2k, which you'll be left with k plus 2. Take the second two terms, the 3k and the 6, you can factor out a 3 and be left with k plus 2. Uh, then since both of those have a k plus 2, you can factor out a k plus 2 which would leave you with 2k and a 3. So back over here, what we have is k plus 1, 
k plus 2 to k plus 3 over 6. And the left hand side hasn't changed this entire time. I just wasn't writing it. So it's done here. All right. Now, if you compare this line right here to what we were supposed to show in part D, you'll see that it is the same. So we, we're done. We did it. Okay. So same as part D. So that means we completed the induction step. So now we are on um, part F. Part F. What is part F? Part F is explain why these steps show that this formula is true. Well, I'm not even going to do that. Um, explain why we're done. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to write our conclusion, OK? Um, we're, we're making a proof here. So the idea is um, if p of 1 is true, which we showed it's true, right? Show p of 1 is true. And then uh, c through e, what we're doing is if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. Well, if p of k is true implies p of k plus 1 is true, that means once you have p of 1, p of 1 implies p of 2, p of 2 implies p of 3, p of 3 implies p of 4, and so on forever. So um, by induction, it holds for all in. So I don't want to do too much here for the explanation, so I'll just say this. I'll say uh, since uh, p of 1 is true and p of k implies p of k plus 1, uh, we have uh, p of n true for all n equals 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 uh, by mathematical induction. That's what we're doing here. Mathematical induction. All right. So, um, yeah, that was, that was long, right? Like, that took us, like almost two full pages to do that one proof okay now this proof could have been a lot faster if we weren't doing like letters a through f if we were just writing what we wanted to write okay um but i wanted you guys to see that step by step because that's how it is in at least a couple of the homework problems um all right let's try let's try a different one um i'm about All right, I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to pick something here. Um, let's try, uh, I don't know, let's try five, right? I don't know. That was three, let's try five. Uh, one point, nope. 5.1.5, 5.1.5. .5. It is, oh no, I don't like that. We're gonna do six. You guys can do five. All right, so six says, Prove 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial plus 3 times 3 factorial. Uh, up to n times n factorial, dot, 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 dot. Up to n, n factorial equals, is it equals? Uh, yeah, n plus 1 factorial minus 1. And that is going to be true for any positive integer. So that's for n equals 1, 2, 3, da, da, da. They don't all start at 1, remember. So that's why you got to be careful and read it. All right. Now, this problem right here does not say it doesn't have a through f. We just need to make a proof. Okay. So you just write what you need to write. Now, almost everything that we wrote on the previous problem we still have to write okay so don't feel like you're you're getting away with something um, you still have to write almost everything so here's what we're going to write so how do we start an induction proof well we start with a basis step 
So the basis step is showing that this is true for P of one, right? Show P of one true. So again, you're just gonna write out the left-hand side with one. I hear a weird noise. I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, show P of one is true. So if you start this at one times one factorial and you end at one times one factorial, then the left-hand side is just gonna be one times one factorial. And then on the right-hand side, we put a one in for the n. So that would be one plus one factorial minus one. Now remember what a factorial is, right? N factorial is one times two times three up to n. So one factorial is just one. So let's work this out. So again, I put a, a question mark over the equal sign because I didn't know if it's true. And now let's work this out. One factorial is one. So one times one. That's one. Now on the right, we have one plus one factorial. One plus one is two, two factorial. Two factorial is one times two, which is two. So this is two minus one. So you have one equals two minus one. That is true. All right, and that's your basis step. So notice that we did get it done faster than we did up here where, you know, it took us this much space to do that up here, and we got it done in less space right here. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the induction step. All right, so what's the induction step? So for the induction step, you have to make an induction hypothesis. So the induction hypothesis is assuming true for n equals k. So you assume basically p of k is true. All right, so what's p of k? p of k is writing this out, but with k's. That's it. So we have, um, so we're assuming uh, one times one factorial plus two times two factorial plus dot 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 up to k times k factorial is equal to what was it uh, k plus one factorial minus one. All right, and what we need to show is that this is true if you replace the k with k plus ones. Now, normally I don't write what we're trying to show. And the reason I don't write it is because when you write down what you're supposed to show, uh, people have a tendency to like feel like we already did it. Like you write it down and then you're like, oh, we did it right there, there it is. Well, no, we just said that we needed to do it. We didn't actually do it. Uh, I'll write it, I'll write it in a different color, right? What we need to show is this, show, one times one factorial, two times two factorial, up to k times k factorial. But we don't stop there, you go up one higher, k plus one, k plus one factorial is supposed to equal, well, if you replace this k with a k plus one, you will have k plus two factorial minus one. All right, so that's what we need to show. So we need to get there starting with the induction hypothesis. So let's do that. So we're gonna start with the induction hypothesis, which is that first line there. Um, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna cut it and paste it. Duplicate. That's the induction hypothesis. That's what you get to start with. All right, now how are we gonna turn this into that thing that I wrote in red? Well, the way you're going to do it, the way you do almost all of these, almost all of these, is you say, well, look at the left-hand side here. It stops at k times k factorial. But the thing we're supposed to show goes one higher. It goes to k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial. So you need to add one of these terms onto both sides here. I haven't done this proof, by the way, so hopefully it goes okay. So we're going to add k plus 1, k 
8 plus 1 factorial to the left hand side, and if you add it to the left hand side, you also have to add it to the right hand side. Like that. So, what will we have? So, on the left hand side, we'll have 1, 1 factorial, 2, 2 factorial, op 2, k, k factorial, one more k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial equals, and then on the left hand side, you've got a. I'm going to write the this term next to the k plus 1. So we have k plus 1 factorial here, and then I'm going to write this term plus k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial, and then we still have that minus 1. Okay. So far, so good. Now, um, I think we talked about this at some point, probably in the previous lecture, but I want to make, make it clear again. Um, I'll scroll down here and do it. Um, whenever you have like a factorial like this, and you multiply it by the next number up, like 5 factorial times 6, well, the 5 factorial, of course, is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. And then if you add the 6 on the end, then you have actually all of the numbers from 1 to 6, and the result is 6 factorial. And that's true even when you've got a variable in there. So if you take an n factorial and you multiply it by n plus 1, that turns into an n plus 1 factorial. Because this is everything from 1 to n, and then you add the n plus 1, and then that's everything from 1 to n plus 1. Right? And so this is a basic fact of factorials. You need to know it to do most of the proofs that have factorials in them, including this one, probably. All right, so back to the proof here. So here's what I see. I see that there's a k plus 1 factorial here. And I also see that there's a k plus 1 factorial here. So that means I can factor out a k plus 1 factorial. So if we do that, on the right-hand side, we're going to have k plus 1 factorial, and then some stuff that's left. And what will be left? Well, if you take away a k plus 1 factorial from k plus 1 factorial, you just have a 1. And if you take away a k plus 1 factorial from k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial, you'll just have a k plus 1. And then we got this minus 1 on the outside here. Uh, then what you've got is 1 plus k plus 1. Well, 1 plus k plus 1 is k plus 2. So we have k plus 2 here, minus 1. And now this is where you use that fact that we just talked about. Because you have a k plus 1 factorial and a k plus 2. Right? That's the same thing as what you got here, right? If this n was actually an n plus 1, and then the n plus 1 was an n plus 2, that would work out the same, and you would have an n plus 2 factorial, right? As long as this number and this number are 1 apart, it works. So what are we going to get here? We have k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2. So that is a k plus 2 factorial minus 1. Again, this should have been written on every line. And so this is where we end up. Now let's look at this and compare it to what we're supposed to show. And if you do that, I think you're going to see that it is exactly what we were supposed to show. So we're done with this step. So once you show the thing that you're supposed to show, you just generally claim, you know, you just say uh, this completes the, in, you know, the induction step. It's nice to just indicate that you think you're done to whoever is reading. Okay. So we have the basis step done, and now we have the induction step done. Once you have the basis and the induction done, you just make your conclusion. And the conclusion is always just whatever it was you were trying to conclude. So what were we, what were we supposed to show? 
right here. This is what we're supposed to show. So you just say that that's what we showed, okay? By induction, conclusion. So one times one factorial plus two times two factorial plus dot, 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 n times n factorial is equal to, what was it? It was uh, n plus one factorial minus one, I believe. And you can say, you know, you just need to say that, you could say by induction if you want to. And we're done, that's a proof. Okay, so these proofs take, you know, quite a bit of writing, but they're very um, structured, right? You have a basis step, you have an induction step, you have a mission for the induction step that you just complete. So they're, they're definitely the longest proofs we've done up till now, but also um, they're pretty formulaic. You just need to do um, a bunch of them and you'll get better at them as you go. Uh, okay, so that's 36 minutes into this. Um, what we're gonna do is think at least one more. So let's, let's find another one to do. Uh, what do we have? Oh, let's do one of those divides problems. Uh, okay. So here's an idea, um, definition here. Uh, if, if we say A divides B, what does that mean? A divides B uh, means, uh, there's, there's a lot of ways to write this. Um, if you say A divides B, oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't reverse that actually, I'm gonna say B divides A. B divides A uh, means that uh, A over B is an integer. Why would that be an integer? That means it goes in evenly, right? So B goes into A evenly, right? You divide them and you don't get a fraction, okay? But there's other ways to say it. You could say um, like A equals equivalently or equivalently uh, B divides A if uh, B equals, nope, if A equals uh, b times n for some n, integer n, right? Um, that's just because um, essentially we moved the b over to the other side. So um, that's what that means. Uh, yeah, so that's what that means. Okay, so what are we going to do with it? Well, they have some proofs that we can do based on this. So if I do 5.1 point, I think 20, I'll try. Uh, 5.1.20, no, that's wrong. Um, 31. Or 32, which should I do? One's even, one's odd. I'm gonna do 32 because then you guys can do 31. All right, um, prove. Oh, this might be hard. Uh, three divides, what does three divide? n cubed plus two n. Whenever n is a positive integer. One, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so this is a different, you know, a little bit different kind of proof than what we've done, but um, you know, we're still gonna go about it the same way. Let's try to do this. Proof. All right, basis step. Now, what would the basis step be? So the basis step is showing that this is true when n equals one. So if you write it out, right, if n is one, then put a one in here. So the basis step would be three divides what? Uh, put a one in for n. One cubed plus two times one. All right, so that is 
3 divides, what is that? 3. Yes, it does. Right? Um, so 3 goes into 3 evenly. Think of it that way. Okay? So that's it. That's the basis step. Very easy. So then what we do is we do the induction step. So what's the induction step? So for the induction step, you make the induction hypothesis. So what we need to do is we need to assume, you know, P of uh, K, well, P of K true, right? That's what, that's what you're supposed to do. But what is P of K? So we need to assume that um, specifically, cross that out, specifically what we need to assume is that three divides what? Well, you just write it out with a K. So put a K in here. K cubed plus two times K. All right, so we're, we're assuming that. Um, and then what we need to show, again, I'm gonna write it in different color here. We need to show three divides uh, K plus one cubed. Uh oh, I already see this is gonna be terrible. Um, plus k plus one okay that's what we need to show so somehow we have to get from the line in pink to the line in red using valid mathematics um sounds hard um so that's why we need a definition of um divide so that we can actually write this down so let's do that so um so we're going to start with the induction hypothesis, which is three divides uh, k cubed plus two k. Now that's great, but I don't want words, I want math symbols. So what does it mean for three to divide k cubed plus two k? So we probably want it in this type of form, okay? Um, we're not gonna use an in there. Uh, we're not gonna use a k there. We gotta use a different variable. We're gonna use like an m instead of the n. All right, so b divides a if um, so the B that divides ends up right here on the right. And the thing that um, B divides A, the one that comes here, is what's over on the left. So 3 divides the K cubed plus 2K. So that means K cubed plus 2K is supposed to be a multiple of 3. So that equals 3 times some integer. So I'm going to use an M, right, for integer M some integer n. Okay, so that's what it means for three to divide k cubed plus two k. Um, great, now what are we gonna do? Well, what we need to do is we uh, somehow need to get to this. How are we gonna do that? That seems insane to me. Uh, I don't like this. Okay, so how would we possibly do that? Um, I think what we're gonna do is actually not start by writing the induction hypothesis. So this is gonna be the first time we've done that. So we're actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it in here and I'm gonna cross it out. So I think that this is gonna be a bad way to do it. I think what we want to do is actually start with this, and then we're going to show that it's a multiple of three. So instead of starting with the induction hypothesis, we're going to show uh, k plus one cubed plus two k plus one uh, is a multiple of three. That's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna start with this thing. So this is already different than the previous proofs. So we're not gonna have a, a left and a right-hand side here. We're just gonna have one thing and we're gonna work with it. So this is what we have to start with. Okay, now what are we gonna do with it? Well, we can multiply it out, right? Um, well, maybe, do we have to? Oh man, do we have to? I don't wanna multiply it out. Um, all right, I'm going to try something without multiplying it out, and then if it goes bad, then we'll multiply it out. 
So since these both have a k plus one, let's try to factor out a k plus one, which would leave us with k plus one squared plus two. Okay, so we're here. Now I can't look at this still and know that it's a multiple of three, right? Um, that's what we're trying to get to. So, you know, keep your, keep your eye on the prize here. Um, so let's uh, take this and uh, multiply out this bit right here. K plus one, and then we're gonna FOIL the K plus one squared and get K squared plus two K plus one, and then plus the two, plus two. Okay. Now, um, at some point you do need to use the induction hypothesis. So the induction hypothesis, right? is where um, 3 divides kq plus 2k, or it's right here, but we crossed it out, right? So this is a k cubed plus 2k. So I, I should be on the lookout for that. I don't see it here. So I'm not, I'm not ready to use that fact yet. I see a k squared plus 2k, but not a k cubed plus 2k. So I think I am just going to have to keep working this out. You know, we're kind of just blind. Um, like I said, I haven't done this proof, so I do not know what the fastest way to do it is. So we're just gonna work through it. All right, so we have this. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to FOIL this out. Sadly, uh, makes me very sad. Um, so let's FOIL it out. And what we're gonna get is, um, well, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna multiply K by all this stuff. So K cubed plus two K squared plus three K. And then we're gonna multiply the one by all of this and have uh, plus k squared plus two k plus three, All right? So this plus this. Uh, combine the like terms, we get uh, k cubed, there's only one of those. Um, then we got a two k squared and a k squared, so that's three k squared. Um, and then you've got a three k and a two k, so that's, is that five k? I mean, I guess it is, not what I expected, plus 5k. Um, and then it looks like you got a plus three on the end. Okay, so how is this going? Uh, you know, I don't know, not that, not that good. <laughs> um, all right, so we would be having to factor this, okay? So we got to factor this. I don't know how to factor this. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, um, either you know how to factor cubics, which let's be honest, there's nobody in the world that knows how to factor cubics. That's, I mean, that is a lie people know, but my brain's not working right now. So I'm not, well, I'm not gonna factor a cubic. So I, I just wrote that down and we're gonna head over to Wolfram Alpha and we're gonna do it. So let's do that and let's find Wolfram Alpha web browser. I was on Khan Academy? Why? Uh, Wool from Alpha. All right. So what we want to factor was it was K cubed uh, plus 3K squared plus 5K plus 3. I really thought there was going to be like more threes than that. And I'm sad that there's not. Just factor it for me. Wait, hold on a second. Let me, I'm, I'm having a, a brain issue. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, I lied. We, we did not need Wolfram Alpha. I just don't know what I'm doing. And that was the problem. All right, so sorry for that detour. Let's get back here. Okay, so I know that we just did this, but um, sorry, I'm gonna have to close it and open it. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, so sorry we just did this and now we have to undo it, but I forgot about the induction hypothesis, right? So the induction hypothesis up here was this, right? So uh, the induction hypothesis uh, was three divides 
k cubed plus 2k, which means k cubed plus 2k is equal to like 3m, right? We get to use this as a fact. So I should have been looking for a k cubed and a 2k, and I forgot that. But that's what we're doing. So I have a k cubed now, but this 5k where I added the 3k and the 2k, I never should have done that. I should have left it as 3k plus 2k plus 3. Right, so I just split it back up. The 5k was actually 3k plus 2k. And then what I want to do is I want to take the k cubed and the 2k, and I want to apply my induction hypothesis, right? Because we know that k cubed plus 2k is actually 3 times m for some integer n. That was the induction hypothesis, some integer m. So that means you can actually take the two parts that I highlighted and replace them with 3m, right? Because they are equal. So you replace that with 3m. So the k cubed and the 2k is 3m. And then what do you have left? You have the 3k squared, the 3k, and the 3. So then what happens? Well, hopefully you see that everything has a 3 on it now. So you factor out a 3 and you have m plus k squared plus k plus 3. This is clearly 3 times an integer. Uh, 3 times, you don't really have to write this line, but I'm going to write it anyway. This is 3 times an integer, I don't know, I'll, q, I'll, I'll use q. 3 times q for an integer q. which is equal to m plus k squared plus k plus 3. So what did we do? Well, what we just did was we started with uh, this, and we just showed that it was 3 times something. That means it is a multiple of 3, so that means 3 divides it. So 3 divides whatever it was we started with, which was up here k plus 1 cubed plus 2k plus 1. So notice that we still needed the induction hypothesis, right? But we couldn't start with the induction hypothesis because, just I want to be clear here, when we tried to start with the induction hypothesis, right, I looked at this right here. I said, start with the induction hypothesis here. And then I looked at it and I said, oh no, we're, we're in trouble because I didn't know how to turn this into this, right? Because I, I just don't know how to do it. So I couldn't really get anywhere starting with this line of work. And that's why I crossed it off and said, okay, well, we're just going to start with the thing that we're supposed to show. We're going to show that three divide this directly. So we started with this and found that three divides it. But you still needed the fact of the induction hypothesis, but you needed it later on. You didn't start with it, you used it as a fact. Okay, so anyway, so 3 divides this thing. And that's the end of the induction hypothesis because that's what we were supposed to show. Um, this concludes the induction hypothesis. So now you're on to the conclusion. And remember for the conclusion, you don't actually, there's no thinking for the conclusion. The conclusion is just whatever it was you were trying to prove. If you successfully did the basis step and the induction step, you get the conclusion for free. That's what induction guarantees. So you just come up here and say, uh, three divides n cubed plus two n. Three divides n cubed plus 2, 2, 2n? Can't remember. It must be. Must be. 3 divides n cubed plus 2n uh, for n equals 1, 2, 3, da, da, da. Now, something that you may have picked up on as you've seen me do these induction proofs is that um, you get a conclusion like this one, right? Three divides n cubed plus two n, and we proved it. So we know this is true. We proved this fact. But if somebody asked me, 
why? Why does three go into this? Why should three go into this thing evenly? I don't know, right? We didn't, we didn't really gain any understanding of it. We were just able to prove it. So, and that's kind of a standard thing with induction proofs is that you can prove a lot of stuff with them, but it doesn't really give a lot of insight. The proof techniques that we did before, often you have to like, if you want to show that three goes into something, you would have to, you know, figure out why the three goes into it in the first place. And here we found three goes into something and we don't know why. Uh, it just does. If it looks like this, it's got a three in it. Why? Who knows? Not us. We didn't, we didn't do it that way. Okay. So, um, you know, that's okay. It's okay to not know why it's true. We were able to prove that it is true. So it's true. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm going to say, notice that, uh, induction proofs, uh, don't often, uh, help you understand why a thing is true. Why a theorem is true. But, you know, if you can prove it, it's true. And I just wanted to mention that fact because um, when you're doing these proof, you know, you might be able to stumble your way through it. And then you say, okay, well, I, I think I did it. I guess it's true. And you'll feel like maybe, you know, you should understand more, but that's not really the case. You know, on, on a lot of these proofs, you, you prove it, it's true, but you did not construct a good reason why it's true, right? You didn't think about it really hard. Like we didn't think about this really hard and say, aha, of course, three goes into n cubed plus two n because of, you know, why? Why three? Why not four? Why, why doesn't four go into n cubed plus two n? Why doesn't two go into n cubed plus two n? No idea. It's three because we proved that it was three. All right. So I think that's enough for, the, for now. That's like 57 minutes. Um, yeah, so that's um, several, not several, it's only like three, huh? Three more induction proofs. Um, we're going to be doing induction for, you know, another at least a week. So look forward to that. Um, talk to you guys next time.